Hey guys, what's going on? It's the best one A. And today I have a review video for you on my 2014 V Star 1300. I purchased it in 2015. This is when I that's when I bought the bike. Uh, the bike has gone through a couple changes which I will go through and explain to you. But first we're going to talk about um, reliability and how the bike um, was or is or has been. So I got this bike in 2015 as a one year leftover. Let's, let's go right into the negatives that I had noticed about this bike starting off. Well, starting off, I noticed the first day that I got it, the seat was just incredibly uncomfortable. I just... <laughs> <laughs> I could not stand the seat. I couldn't stand the seat for anything. And the uh, first thing that I did was I had actually bought a Mustang seat. And the problem that I ran into with the Mustang seat was it was not very comfortable for me. And also it pushed you forward a little bit. So I ended up getting rid of the Mustang seat and getting this ED Big Torrent seat. So a um, little bit more about when I bought the bike. When I bought the bike, I had to drive the bike all the way from Flemington, New Jersey, because that's where I bought it, a dealer out there. From Flemington, New Jersey, um, back to New York, which is about like 100 miles or something like that. And let me tell you, I stopped in Woodbury after doing like 60, 70 miles, and I couldn't even get up. Like literally sitting on the stock seat, I couldn't even get up. I, I, was, I, I was in so much pain. Like my tailbone, I, I couldn't even... I, it was so much pain it was unbearable um so you know i started looking at seats and then i got the mustang and then eventually i ended up selling a mustang at uh sadly a loss and getting the this here which is the ed torrent seat and this has been nothing short of phenomenal just a phenomenal seat amazing really do love it all right so another negative that i've that i have had would say is this one's a little controversial. Um, I would say there's no six gear. Now, some people may say you don't need a six gear. I sometimes am iffy. Sometimes I feel like I would love to have a six gear, especially if I'm going over 70 miles an hour, over 70, 75. I feel that need for it. But if I'm cruising at, say, 65, uh, 65 to 70, then I'm, I don't really mind it. I'm fine. Like it, I find that it's not so bad but once you get over 70 is once you get that six gear what they're going to do is probably the same thing they did with the fjr they'll end up changing the transmission gearing to accommodate that six gear so technically you still have pretty much the same drive font the uh, complete drive ratio it's just that they shortened up a few other gears to make that six gear fit in Let's see. Uh, my other negative, I would say, is this odd rear tire size. The stock tire size is a 170-70. Right here now, I have a 180-65 on there. There's a Michelin Commander 2, but it came with Bridgestone Excedras in a 170-70. And a lot of people, a lot of people tend to have trouble finding those tires. So I would consider that maybe one negative because there's not many tires that you find in a 170-70. And I notice it's 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 kind of hard to find you could find a 180 65s or you can go to a little bit of a different size than that if you so please the uh front tire you can pretty much find almost anywhere and that's not too bad as far as tires go i find this bike to be actually pretty easy on tires now i've had the shinko 777 in the rear that lasted about 6,500 miles. I had the Bridgestone Excedras. Those lasted maybe about 7,500 miles, somewhere around there. Um, and that was the, both of those were 170 70s. The Commander 2s, you usually get about 18 to 19,000 out of those. And the only thing you want to do is make sure you lubricate your spline bearings that's in the back in that wheel to make sure that they are nicely lubricated. Let me see. Oh my God. Is there any other negatives? Um, well, I would say another negative would be for me was the deluxe fairing. I, I don't have that fairing on a bike right now, so it's, it's kind of hard to show. But I always noticed, and everyone else on the V Star 1300 form and V Star 1300 Deluxe form always notice and complains about the buffeting that comes from under here over the tank and calls jostling to your head. And that annoyed me to no end. Uh, what a lot of people would do is they would put on the Memphis Shades 
um, Memphis Shades fork lowers, which you would install on your forks, like about here. You put them here, and they would block that wind coming from under there. Another thing with that fairing was I had broken tabs down here, which um, really actually were my fault from changing handlebars. I should have just took the fairing off completely as opposed to just loosening the screws and then trying to tilt the fairing, and I think that ended up those causing those tabs to break. But it, it was just another failure point. There's other people that have had that failure, but the tabs, I, I really coughed the tabs up to my fault because I pretty much broke those. So <laughs> I don't know if I can really include that as a negative. Now, um, I do have the stock bars back on there. I, you guys know, maybe if you've been following me, you know that I've had the RSTD bars on here. I've had the the Paul Yaffe Mini Apes on here. And I right now I'm back to stock. Uh, I don't know. I am most happy with these right now. The Mini Apes were nice. I just didn't like my hands being up above the fairing in the wind I kind of found that I, th I thought that if my hands were above the fairing and in the wind what's the point of having a fairing right I may as well get a windshield then so I don't know it was nice my hands were somewhat comfortable like you still got the numbness you still got a little pain in the back I mean I got that with the RSTDs I got that with uh, the Yaffies I get that with the stocks you know it, it just happens take a hand off the bar rest for a little bit keep riding or stop take a break you know figure it out that's pretty much it for the fairin business uh, the, oh well no one other thing with the fairin well you do have the gps with the stock deluxe fairin which i love which is great i've used that to navigate trips um if you follow if you have if you follow me and you know you know that we did the west virginia motorcycle meetup and I planned that whole route basically using base camp and loaded it on the Navi. And I was and I planned it even to the point where I would be able to send the file to someone who may have a Harley boombox and they could load it onto their Harley boombox and be able to navigate also. Really nice program that base that Zumo has if they're the ones that created it, but and, and worked really nicely with the Zumo 665. I am planning to put the Zumo 665 back on here also, but um, I'm working on that. All right, so let's get on to the next thing. Suspension. That was another one of my negatives was suspension. The front suspension, the front springs, I found them to be very soft. I ended up changing out the fork fluid to 15 weight. Right now I have a mix of a 15 and a 10 weight in there. But I ended up changing up the fork fluid to a 15 weight. And reason being was that, you know, when you get on the brakes, if you get on the brakes hard, the front would just dive, like really, really, really dive. And I was like, what the heck? Just really soft. So I changed that out. I got progressive springs in there now, which really help with keeping the front end feeling a little bit more stable. I've got a mixture of 10 and 15 weight, but I think next time I may go to either straight 15 or just straight 20, 20 weight oil. So I may just do that also. I don't know. I have to decide. Right now, it feels pretty good with the 10 and the 15. It's still a little on the soft side, so if you go to the 20, it might firm it up just a little bit more. And I've been playing also with the fluid height. Because of the progressive springs, you use a different fluid height than you would the stock. With the stock, you would you would use a certain air uh, air gap fluid height. Pretty much, you get what I do, what I mean. But um, you get your air gap is definitely is different with the progressive springs because the, their mass takes up a little bit more space than the stock springs. So, um, but you can play with that. They, they they in their directions they give you a max and they let you know what what your max will be. So you can play with that definitely. Let's see. Yes, and the rear shock, um, after 20,000 20, miles, I believe, twenty to 25,000, the rear shock just got soft. And I changed that out or replaced it with a progressive shock. And you guys know, the, most of you guys who have been watching pretty much know the story with that. It's been pretty good. Um, I've, I've, I have a deep love for the progressive shock. Just be mindful of where you buy it from because the progressive shock is not made for the 1300. They don't make one for a 1300. I had an issue with the last progressive shock and I had to replace that one. So now I'm on my second uh, progressive shock and this progressive shock was actually made for a striker. So just be mindful of where you buy the shock from because Progressive will tell you themselves that they don't make one for a 1300, but it will fit. The 950 shock will fit the 1300. The striker shock will fit the 1300. And 
the bike runs just fine. Anyway, those are pretty much what I have for negatives, and it's not really much else I could think for negatives. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about the motor. The motor is an over square, I believe they call it an over square motor, where uh, over square short stroke, I think they call it, if I'm not mistaken. 1304 cc's, uh, 80 cubic inches, and the fire truck's gone by. Is it a fire truck? No, that's an ambulance. The, the ambulance. We're going off to help somebody and save somebody's lives. God bless them. God bless them. God bless them. We need them. All right. So, um, 1,304 cc's, if I'm not mistaken, over square motor, which is a little different in design from the Harleys, where the Harleys, you can, um, you can uh, chug them a bit. But if you've ridden Harleys, you know even they don't like chugging. They don't care for chugging. So you have to, yes, you do have to be mindful of that. This motor particularly really does not like chugging and it will let you know. Um, it is mounted with firm mounts, no bushings, uh, firm mounts. You have the, the, there are some there in the front, hard to see, uh, one on the top and then one in the back. I believe they're, um, definitely they are metal. I'm pretty sure, not plastic. Uh, horsepower, their listed horsepower is about 69 horsepower and alleged torque is about 81 foot pounds of torque and that's what i had from from doing my research and my searching about this motorcycle again this is 2014 okay in case you forgot my ecu is flashed by a gentleman named ivan and what that does is that stops a lot of the little uh, nuances i guess that would fall under a negative is the ECU tuning of this bike. Stock is seriously, seriously, seriously annoying. One thing I didn't like was the fuel cut. And that's one of those things that the engineers put in there, I guess, to try and save fuel and help make the bike, help make the bike make uh, US emissions. And there's a couple other things that they do in there. And he makes a few changes. One of those changes is to the fuel cut, which smooths out your throttle. He reduces the, he reduces the, the not the not the back pressure he reduces the engine braking somehow some way with some changes that he makes to the ecu tuning he also enriched the fuel map a little bit i think by a little bit by changing the timing and there's a couple other things it's all really listed on his website that he does um, really changed up the timing really smoothed out the bike lowered the radiator fan temperature the time that the temperature that it comes on he lowered that by a little bit and it, it, the changes that it makes are just phenomenal and you know what a lot of people will say that they don't want to spend four hundred dollars on an ecu tune but i'm telling you if you buy this bike if you buy this bike all right that should be the first thing you do yes you want to get a new suit seat maybe you want to change the bars maybe you want to add a fairing but i'm telling you right now the first thing that you should do is ECU flash that, that that I can tell you straight off the back that's the first change that I would make is I would want that ECU flash all right first change I I can't even go into that enough and I'm kind of going off on a on a tangent here all right so uh, another uh, positive that I found with this bike uh, being a Japanese bike being a Yamaha being a Yamaha okay I found the paint to be excellent all right if you you can look at the paint. They this this gray has like some flakes in it. It's a mixture of about seven or eight different paints, and that's just how that's just how the the Yamahas are. That all of their paints are just a mixture and a combination of a couple different paints. And you can't just go to PPG and get this this paint made to spray on your bike you have to go to a company color rights company you have to go to that company you have to they they're the only ones that for some reason have this combination also another thing that i love about this bike and i don't have this on my list because i did list all this stuff out you get metal fenders front and rear they're metal not plastic um just really love that and it's, it's that's something that you you a lot of um a lot of motorcycles like to go to plastic front fenders and i tell you that metal fender is just amazing in my opinion amazing saddlebags with these saddlebags you get so much storage let me just 
these are these are the deluxe saddlebags now if you're going to go with the Torin, right because you know you have the Torin model Torin model is going to have the windshield and you're going to have the leather bags up front here now this is a deluxe of course it comes with hard painted bags and just if you look at the space that you get here you know you get a ton of space I could spread my hand out like that and still I am not touching but my wrist against here I'm not touching there and that's just how much space you get in your in your your saddlebags all right then they are held on by these little screws here which you probably need to wipe off but um yeah saddlebag space amazing I just I just love it and I love the design of the saddlebags and the way that it fits the lines and the way that it fits the bike itself just look at that just look it's like really nicely thought out not a uh not a secondary at all like did that was thought out like they just flow with the bike really beautifully all right um top box does cover that a little bit so yeah saddlebags uh really impressed with that you really can store the saddlebags down if you want to you can take a trip just with the saddlebags if you so please and pretty much be good to go I mean, you may not even really need that top box, to tell you the truth. I mean, especially if you're by yourself. Now, if you bring a wife, that's a little bit different. Uh, maybe you might have to, maybe now you might have to bring a couple more things. Because, you know, they like, to, they like to pack their stuff. But you didn't hear that from me. Um, all right, so let's talk about the transmission. And then after that, I'll talk about braking with this bike, with the V-Star 1300. And now this is taken in mind. This is not including, you know, there's no modifications to the shifting. There's no modifications to the braking other than brake pads, right? But other, aside, brake pads aside, pretty much things kind of stay somewhat the same, uh, except for the front, but we're going to go into that. Uh, shifting. As far as shifting, you do get a front toe shifter and you get a heel shifter also, which is really nice. That's something that... I I really do like uh, shifting is very nice and smooth. The only thing I will tell you is that this motor likes this motor, right? This motor, 1300 motor. This motor it likes for you to hold the gears a little bit longer. It just likes for you to rev a little bit more, not a lot, but just a little bit more. All right, just a little bit more, and then shift. And when you do that, you get a really nice and positive click it just goes right into that next gear slips right in you don't even have to pull the clutch all the way i mean you can just nice easy click and it just goes right in i mean it's just i i i love it it's really nice now the toe shifter i really don't use the toe shifter much i'm sorry the heel shifter heel shifter i don't really use the heel shifter much but once in a while i may use it there have been some times where i thought about cutting it off but you know i kind of just leave it there so I never bothered to cut it off. All right. So that's that's shifting. Transmission is really smooth, really nicely put together. As far as braking, right? A lot of power in the back brakes, even with the stock pads. Stock pads put off a lot of dirt, really put off a lot of dirt. A lot of power in the, in, in the back pads, the back, back pads, excuse me, back braking. Really, really strong. Front braking, and not too bad. I did have to upgrade this, right? I had to upgrade my lines to the steel lines as you can see here right i upgraded those lines to the, those steel lines i put that in i got that off of ebay i'll uh, talk to the gentleman he made my line here just a little bit longer and um that really helped with the brake feel then i moved to some ebc pads in front that also really helped with the brake feel just to give you a little bit more feeling of a stronger braking motorcycle then if you firm up the 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 suspension there really nicely it really comes together and then the rear pads i put ebc pads in the rear and that really helped but you want to be careful with the, what pads you put in the rear because if you put full centered pads in there you're going to lock the rear up and the rear is really strong so i just put organic and that's really really nice works nice uh lighten lighten with the v-star 1300 i think is not very good in the beginning um you get that one headlight here which doesn't really do much. Uh, I tend to, what I did was I changed that to an LED. As you can see there, I changed that to an LED light and I added the stock V-Star 1300 Touring lights, passing lamps with these uh, Chinese LED 
passing lamps inserted in there and then I have the custom custom dynamic lights in here and I'll show you what those look like all right as you can see those are the custom dynamic lights there I do have a LED lamp in the brake housing which is here and then these are custom these are custom dynamic um, brake lights which kind of have that whole run turn brake type thing and then this right here is my third brake light and I'll show you what that looks like with my B camera here so you can see that all right and then when we when we hit the brake you can see what that looks like there you go and when you hit the brake you can see what that looks like looks a little bit different but nothing really out of the ordinary as you can see there <laughs> how you doing <laughs> Uh, I like that. I actually really do like that. Oh, that was a good addition. That third little lamp there, man, I tell you, when I tell you that that wakes people up, <laughs> it really wakes people up. All right, so that is breaking, shifting, uh, lighting, and I'll start it in a little bit, and I'll show you exactly what it, is, what how this trio looks like. First, I'll tell you about the intake. The intake is a Cobra. Uh, intake with the Cobra. I'm sorry, not a Cobra. You know, you guys know I had a Cobra slip on on there, but I took it off because it was just too loud. So I put the stock back on. I drilled the baffle here and I drilled the baffle over here. And that gives you gives you a little bit more noise, but it's not too much noise. If anything, this darn thing is super loud. <laughs> that thing is loud. And we have a Linby crash bar. The multi bar there, with that's not a multi bar. The Limby, um, ah, I forgot the name of it. Uh, really nice bar. Really love that bar. Just really love the look that it gives. You know, just a just a really nice, really nice look. As you can see, just really really nice. Just a quality bar, quality product. Uh, all right, so let's start it up so that you guys can hear it. It's already in neutral. people do get a little agitated but my headlight is aimed down probably a little further down than what it needs to be but it's aimed down so that um to kind of not irritate you i just think sometimes some people they just you know they're getting a little sensitive in their private area so they feel the need to want to high beam you or whatever the case may be so you know whatever anyway oh so this is the sound like it turn that off now I've, I've already been there with the loud exhaust I've been there with the Cobra slip on I've done that and you know I'll be honest with you when I'm out on a long ride and I'm just cruising along I really do want the bike to just be a little bit more on the quiet side you know having it just loud and blaring um, I'm just past that. I'm just over it, you know. I have, uh, like I said, I have 42,000, uh, I think 42, 200 and change on here. And I'm actually looking forward to putting another uh, 40,000 on there. Um, I have this, uh, I didn't show you my Shad Top Box SH58X. I did a couple videos on that, just showing that. And it's expandable to three levels okay so you can raise it up you can lower it down lower lower it down god let's speak english here um it depends on what you prefer 
really nice, really secure, and you can put the key in and actually remove it and take it off and bring the whole box into your room with you if you travel anywhere. Um, yeah, so really happy with the bike. I've had it uh, going on five years now, and I really just can't complain. Uh, when time comes to get something else, I don't even know what I would get because I really like the way this rides. I love the way this cruises, and I just really enjoy it. Um, Reckless Farron was a really nice addition. Manages wind very well. No more need for fork lowers. Um, nice audio, not using an amp. Running a Kenwood radio. Added the Freedom Shield here to just help redirect that wind a little further up. Nice uh, Kenwood radio, all marine grade. And that's pretty much the view, as you can see there, from um, from behind while riding, pretty much. Um, yeah, really can't complain. And really nice, really nice ride. Uh, Farron has really helped. That Farron has really helped with wind direction, wind deflection, and just making the, the ride just that much smooth, smoother between that and the shield really really nice i know some people don't like farons and if you're into the naked bike you know you can do that too but um so this is my uh v-star 1300 2014 deluxe review um and where where it is currently with 42,200 miles actually surprise is not at 50,000 this year but we all know how that is um at any rate, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, anything you'd like to leave, please feel free to leave them down in the comments below. I always appreciate any comments that you leave. I always appreciate the time that you take to view these videos. And I hope that um, this video may help anyone out there that may have any questions, comments. Um, as far as maintenance, I actually didn't go into maintenance, did I? Um, adjusted the valves maybe two to three times. Uh, sink throttle bodies a couple times. Oil changes, oil filter. Tires, ride on. Tire sealant and balancer. Um, brake pads. Flush brake fluid. You know, just the usual things. Bought a new battery this, um, uh, this month, last month. Um, really that's really about it uh not really much else i could really say as far as maintenance uh nothing really crazy uh change head bearings to uh all balls uh tapered head bearings and uh, as far as maintenance yeah that's really about it um uh, other than making making sure that the bike is running in decent and tip top shape anyway guys so i think i've kept you long enough i hope you guys enjoyed this review and i do thank you guys for watching uh for commenting and i please and i invite you guys to subscribe if you'd love to see more riding videos from me all right you guys you take care it's the best one a out and i will see you later stay safe